Thank you for checking out 90 for Chill the Podcast with Cat Bus Russ, and this is Cat Bus Russ. And here's what the episode is going to be this week. Because I could actually keep track of when digital releases occur, I decided that this is the time for me to post my conversation with the poetic critic that we had after C2E2 Night 2, I believe it was, uh, when we went and saw the Barbie movie, you know, when they're not really offering too much after hour stuff on a Friday, which is weird. Maybe things will correct themselves at C... Not, I'm sorry, this is not C2E2, this is Fan Expo. C2E2, I think, is doing the best they can. Um, or I'm sure I had complaints about that. I did a lot of coverage for that one. Just go back through the archives. So, uh, yeah, Fan Expo uh, in Rosemont. There's an AMC, you know, just a five-minute walk from the all the, event, all the uh, convention excitement. So that's what we did with our Friday night there. So... Yeah, we saw Barbie, um, and I think this is a great episode in the fact that, you know, we just go and immediately talk about how we uh, feel about the film. Um, kind of like, if anything, it's the closest thing we got to Siskel and Ebert, I suppose, that kind of vibe. So thank you for uh, taking the time to check out this podcast. I'm not certain what I'm going to do for next week's episode. Um, there's still stuff i got to follow up on. And uh, But I got some dates of availability, so if you want to jump at those, let's see. I am free Friday night this week, and I am f- free Saturday night next week. I just need you to, um, and Sundays are always good, so send an email to rustabus07 at gmail.com with a movie, a film, I'm uh, sorry, a movie, a director, an actor, a theme, just focus on features between 70 and 100 minutes and i'm sure we can come up with a slice of fried gold for this podcast again the email is rustabus07 at gmail.com that's r-u-s-s-t-h-e-b-u-s-0-7 at gmail.com and maybe you can get an idea of what the next episode will be uh follow me on letterbox my username there is cm darth that's c is in cool m is movies darth is a sith lord the premier cm again on the internet in my humble opinion so thanks again for coming to 90 for chill podcast enjoy the show the following podcast is (coughs) predicted under the laws of the united states and other countries any unauthorized duplication redistribution may be met with criminal prosecution or the wrath of civil liability or the wrath of the tall man. <laughs> Ken! <laughs> so, the poetic and critic and I have just finished watching Barbie. And, you know, a lot of thoughts through my mind. So, La La Land walked so um, Barbie could run. Uh, speaking of all the musical numbers and the Ryan Gosling of it, um, I get. I think this would be a perfect double feature with Fight Club. Dare I say? I mean, it's got. I mean, Fight Club's about establishing the male identity and whatever the women, the female identity is, which is, I think the entire pur- purpose of this movie. Correct. certainly an ambitious film especially for this sort of sort of comedy yeah with that being ambitious it's like yeah no little girl who's going to buy a barbie doll will actually be able to understand this feature yeah there's a reason it's pg-13 a lot of reasons it's pg-13 right but i don't know why mattel would be so gung-ho about attaching their name to the feature i mean besides for money as uh will ferrell's ceo character yeah. expresses well they've already ordinary barbie that's a horrible <laughs> it's gonna make a lot of money sir that's an excellent idea they're going to do a limited edition weird barbie <laughs> and it took us it, well i mean it took us 15 years we finally found a way to cast kate mckinnon in the perfect role um so yeah much like the, Le- the Lego movie <coughs> did in finding a way to have 
It's Mafia about having fun with your toys. In a different way. Yes, but the Lego movie could, you know, the most difficult thing in that is Morgan Freeman's character dying. I meant to tell you all of this, but I was dead. <laughs> so, yes, but um, I don't know. I mean, could I... I stop and think, could I cut anything out? And I would say the entire Barbie wanting the Pinocchio element of it. Don't go into too heavily and spoil it. Well, as I said, the Pinocchio element of it. Now, that would cost us the final line, which I will never sacrifice. I'm the guy who bought my nephew um, Teen Titans Go to the Movie just for the last line. No, Robin, that's not the time for it. Another time will come. Ask your parents where babies come from! <laughs> that's, so, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. My, my, biggest, my biggest concern is what does Rob Thomas feel about this movie? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it would be more appropriate if the Kens were jamming out to some stupid Cre- um, Creed or dare I say Nickelback song uh, Creed <coughs> of course Creed's every song is supposed to be aspirational because of the Christian influence and Nickelback sucks you can't really come up with anything good to them they had the theme to Monday Night Raw for about three years that's about all I can say about Nickelback yeah, there's a lot to unpack with Barbie, and I feel that there are many people with bigger brains than mine that could deal with it, especially because it's so late at night as it is. But I really enjoyed the film, and yes. I'm glad. I'm glad for its success. You know, oh, it. Yeah, but this is. I, then I got to think about the entire conservative backlash against it. Well, that was that was kind of inevitable. Well, it was, but I didn't really like. You, oh, I did not expect middle fingers to the patriarchy right off the bat. Like, Lauren Bo, Lo, Lo, like, MTG, Marcy Taylor Green, Lauren Bover, like, they, I mean, they would have, basically, if those Republicans watched the movie, which they probably have not, there'd be a scanner moment, right? Well, is that what is that what movies should be about? Trying to blow up people's heads. I don't think so. But I did I love think... Rhea Perlman's yeah. character. I <laughs> oh, in the detail, little details, like oh, this seems a little bit. Everything pays off in this movie. Yeah, that that is it. Like I, as I say, I try to think about how can I cut some time out on this movie, and it's like it's a freaking perfect but remember script. When we first, when it was first reported, some hints at what the plot was going to be. The peop- some people pointed out correctly that, you know, it wasn't unlike when Disney tried to deconstruct their princess movies with Enchanted. That was back in 2007. Right. Of course, it, Barbie is part of a much longer tradition of this sort of fish-out-of-water fantasy that tends to be really surefire. I've heard uh, reasonable, viable comparisons well, with Farrell being in the movie. You have Elf, another film that is very good at paying things off and right no well that's like, probably not a coincidence to cast him oh no and or, back to the lego movie as well yes lego movie it says nine it's, it's ages nine. that's a suggestion <laughs> i mean sorry maya rudolph couldn't quite carry it in lego movie 2 lego movie 2 is fun if you like the first lego movie well, I, I don't lo- love the first Lego movie. I think the Lego Batman movie oh, no, 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 really no, no, reached no, no, no. the full potential. And that and that brings us Lego. and that brings us to the huh, dare I say the most underappreciated actor of the twenty first century, Michael Sarah. I, I I'm surprised he's been able to do this for the last twenty three years. Like, you know, I thought he was the Oh, this is the funny version of Jesse Eisenberg. But no, no, he's he's rolled with this through pretty much everything. It, it, it almost, you know, and 
And it feels bad because you don't want him to expand. Like, he's nailed this thing perfectly. <laughs> oh, you can't help but love the patriarchal references. Like, yeah. the entire concept of Midge being in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought we discontinued her. <laughs> Yeah, all the references to all the... Re- I remember con- controversies over stuff like Growing Up Skipper and the... Yeah. The, especially the Earring Magic Ken. Oh, People yes. People went nuts about that one at the time. Uh, but what, again, I don't want to give away too much. If For those who haven't seen the picture. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I think they took it a little too far. When we have President Barbie... Yeah, we just took this back from you Mother Mattels. Yeah. Like... I mean, and then, as I say, you can't fault a movie that casts John Cena to be John Cena. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the entire problem with Dwayne Johnson, is it's like, well, he's going to be something serious. No, he's The Rock. But yeah, this is another movie that was brought up in comparison to Barbie, especially, especially with the recent events was Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Another yeah. film that's very much about making a constructed world and Yeah, well uh, going crazy with it. And or other did, there are many wonderful movies. The the Fish Out of Water narrative like this has been pretty wonderful in the right hands for a long time. Going one that Jessica Ritchie pointed out and that I at do Ruby agree there's more of a heavy have knows was being there. 1979. Oh, I can see that. There's a lot of that. Like, Ryan Gosling's performance ends up sort of being a nightmare version of that. Oh, and. For a stretch. Like, this is like. I don't know. Ryan Gosling is the Harrison Ford of our time. We're never going to give him a a reward or an award. But you think about the nice guys. Everybody thinks. Brings up the nice guy. Yes, like, everybody's been recommending on Twitter. If you love it in this movie, you guys see the nice guy. Right, it's like, a good movie. Yes. Oh God, Jesus Christ! Will you guys knock it off? You just learned your use the Lord's name in vain. No, I think I used it rather effectively. So. So uh, I am at a good time with Barbie. Yep. And a few thoughts because we saw this in Dolby Vision. Mm. You know, with Dolby Cinema at the AMC here in Rosemont. And I, I like the twenty I I, I will say the extra of... fifteen dollars to get a reclining chair was nice. Dolby I, I'm not a big bass guy. <laughs> this is a guy who li- listens to uh industrial music, the mm-hmm. ultra heavy beat. It's like, no, I don't need to feel it it's not an action movie, so when I feel the bass run through it's like that's not a raptor. That's 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 um the guy who played Shang Chi. <laughs> well, we saw a bunch of trailers and given that we don't know how many of these movies might be moved to twenty twenty four. Because that's the dual strikes in Hollywood, the writers and actors. Yeah, movies. that was something weird. Like I'm not gonna record like I, I respect not recording Peter Weller and with his his panel, I understand why he doesn't want to be recorded. Yeah. But the photographs, that's kinda of weird. No, I don't think so. It's generally just seen as good etiquette. Well, yeah, I'm not putting a flash out there. I'm gonna get a picture. I have score at least a score of concussions, Rory. I need the like no, you, like Tara Strong, doing it in, like, the bubbles voice. Oh, you, you're going to remember this in your, just remember and embrace it in your brain. I, I again, I've had a score of concussions. No, I, I don't have that option. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree, you know, uh, Peter Weller, excellent panel. Like, yeah. I never expected the sophisticated version of Michael Rooker. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, uh, Michael Rooker is all fun, and Peter Weller is all fun, but he is not thinking. He like he is not thinking about like it, it's you know. I wanted to talk about like, well, you're always excellent. Shadow hours, 
your Faustian performance is brilliant. Otherwise, the movie's a piece of garbage. Like, there's uh, Peter Weller is never not delivered. Levi- Leviathan, like, yeah, he, he's making it work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, but yeah, uh, with that, that's just a strike com- comment, and I brought it up. I already recorded the bonus episode. I guess I'm going to just throw this in the midst of the final version of this podcast. Well, whatever you want to do. Well, that'll be released on Tuesday, you know. Yeah. So. Well, we also saw a bunch of trailers. And you didn't. You in... told me nothing about Hugh Grant in Orange Face. I thought you'd already. No, I, I kind of thought. I wasn't sure if you'd seen the trailer. No, I back, don't. Because these trailers do get a, put you up t- online you a few t- days before. I am signed in. I am signed into YouTube, unlike you, Rory. So it knows. Hmm, you watch a lot of what culture horror videos. You're gonna love the Saw X trailer, and I did. <laughs> That's that's what I'm saying. It knows me. The algorithms know me. I'm not a big YouTube or Google guy because, huh, they show a lot of right wing commercials when it comes to politics time. So well, I'm... and then you then you do the research and it's like, oh yeah, you guys are buying the right. Wow. That's why I'm not on. That's why I will not do YouTube videos anymore. Right. Well, I mean Podbean does them, but we don't like Podbean here. Go to. So if you subscribe to 90forchill.com, the podcast, quit it, and subscribe to 90 for Chill with Cat, the podcast with Cat Bus Russ. So. But it, it may be because it was Dolby Vision. We were getting a lot of trailers for the basically most of the holiday children's movies. And, and, and again, the kids' I'm, movies are big, big right now. This stuff, you show me cell shaded Disney and it's like, Damn right I'm here. Alan Tudyk sounds like a very sophisticated goat. Yeah, Thank so you. Yeah, so new trailer for Wish. I still... I'm with those who felt when that movie was announced only at last year's Disney convention in September. D23? Yeah. That was that was only when people first found out about it. Disney does not announce their animations in a very far in advance anymore, well, which worries me. Well, no. They think animation is going to sell regardless at some point, as Encanto proved. Well... Yeah, but not so much Strange World. I don't know what they were thinking about with Strange World. Like, if it was, like I get, like, I'm sorry. You have Dennis Quaid. You realize how great a work Jack is doing. Where was he? <laughs> no, no, we gotta get somebody hip. No, I want my goofy-looking guy who play. I want my goofy-looking... Gosh, damn, that does look like what would happen if Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid shag. But with Wish, what bothers me, I do it. Will grant that the this attempt at trying to do two D and three D does look better on the big screen than it does if you've seen you see like no, a trailer don't. online. People could comment on that, but at the same time, it it doesn't grab me the way something like Across the Spider Verse does with its take it a sort of hybrid. I, aesthetic uh, you see here's the thing on the cross eye spider verse i didn't really right. consider it a hybrid us like it was his own thing and you can say hybrid is like no it's just it's just doing what brief periods of doctor strange and the multiverse of madness did it's like oh yeah and here's the paint world <laughs> don't Get out of the paint world and be, get get out of the paint universe immediately. It's very hard to eat. Is an important lesson. And never mind. It is the bet in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the best post credit sequence ever. I'm going to stand by that. Well, as I'm not. Real... It is groovy. We'll just leave it at that. With wish, I just part of it is I don't know why they didn't try something really ambitious for the 100th anniversary movie you you <sighs> if okay. there's any ever a time you really want to knock it out of the park with the uh okay one on the one one part is you it's the 100th anniversary so don't screw this up like if you go like let's just talk you know, going into professional wrestling. Um, WrestleMania 10, like, if it wasn't for the 
Owen Hart, Bret Hart, and then Bret Hart winning, and in the in the first ladder match, quote unquote. It was a pretty. It's pretty lame pay per view. Uh, WrestleMania twenty five is main evented by Triple H and Randy Orton. That's a pretty dull main event nine times out of ten. <laughs> so it's kind of like. Um, you can be ambitious, you can think you have gold, but then it's like, yeah, but you can't afford to screw this up. Now you could say that, especially with Vince McMahon and Triple H running the company, oh, no, this is gold, and they don't have a clue. So, with that said, Disney might not have a clue, but as somebody who's not dedicated to, as I say... We were discussing. I've seen the two Wreck-It Ralph movies, which are not your traditional 3D movies in the sense that, well, it's supposed to be capturing the video game element. Yeah. Yes. Um, Gal Gadot sucks at singing, and that can bring anything down is a lesson I learned from Ralph Breaks the Internet, which should have been called Ralph Wrecks the Internet. We did not need that to be saved as a joke in the movie. And we really need to blow up the bunny earlier in the movie. The bunny gets the pancakes. Um, I don't know. So it's, I, I think part of the problem is that when you think about it, the marketing for Wish so far has been weirdly cagey about why we're supposed to care about any of this. Well, I think that's because it's... Well, there's your ambition. It's a concept that's difficult to explain. You've sold it to the cinema snob as Solar Babies, and I well, tried yes. tried my best to tell Brad Jones, no, it's City of Lost Children. And I watched the trailer, and I'm thinking, it's kind of Labyrinth-esque. I mean, a little bit of Jareth. Nah. Yeah. So have you seen that R2-D2 painted as Aladdin Sane? On no. the artist, you haven't been on the artist floor too much. I've been on the artist floor. Oh, uh, but... there's a there's a table with a bunch of really like, <sighs> if our nie youngest niece wasn't two years old, you damn right I'm buying her a little one of those eighty dollar Lolas. So I'm trying to think of something cool to buy her. Maybe the R two D two painted as Aladdin Sane might be what I get her. My little brother would our little brother would appreciate that. Well, it's not fluffy though, and at two, I think they still depend on fluffiness. But what I guess that goes back to the question though, and you also get this question with something like Wonka is why, what what is it about the story that needs to be told in the first place? No one ever asked about Willy Wonka's child early young adult days but nobody nobody ever asked about where the wishing star that factored into two disney movies and the logo but nobody <laughs> but here you go again as somebody who doesn't get to watch all these trailers he doesn't go out of the, his way to see these trailers look i'm ha my last episode of the podcast is about a charles band movie and you can actually say the last two questions, two episodes, are about child, Charles Band movies, but I don't want to recognize, give Killjoy any more rep recognition than it has already gotten from me. Um, you didn't sell me, uh, you didn't tell me about Orange Face Hugh Grant. I will, you give me, like, if you say that in your pitch, I am going to write you a billion dollar movie. Oh, I'm there. Intercourse Dune. This is the Timothy Chalamet movie I want to see. And I think... Then I see Olivia Colman. I see a bunch of other fine British actors. I, I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm there. This is almost like um, Rednecks watching Sigmund, uh, watching Siegfried and Royd. Hate tigers. Hate queers. But queers and tigers? I'm getting season tickets. <laughs> So, so Wonka is gonna work, I or I'm gonna try making it work, provided I have plenty of free time, which I do not. But 
you know. I'm, no, I just I want Warner Bros. I want WB. That's enough for me to want WBD stock. I guess the problem, and with the Wonka trailer is. The whole reason we like Willy Wonka is because he is, he is a misanthropic, sinister person. There's that element. And I, the and movie just doesn't have the tone okay. that the 1971 film did. Okay, here here's where we're going to get yes. off track. You say sinister, misanthropic person. I say, no, that's just Gene Wilder we liked. No, I don't think it's just that. It's very much baked into the text and oh. the better versions of the story. I'm, what what, what don't happened know, to the musical? The stage musical? Yeah. Well, what happened with the stage musical was, for those who don't know, in 2013 there was a stage musical adaptation with songs by uh, Mark Shaman and I'm trying to remember name of his usual lyricists uh Whitman and Shaman okay the guys who did Hairspray among other shows they did an excellent score for a stage adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that, that ran in the West End for from 2013 through right up through the end of 2016 I believe yeah it, did it, was, it ever leave the West End it went to Broadway but the thing was that in London, the show was a fresh adaptation with a few shout outs to other versions here and there. And as the, what they call the 11 o'clock number, and it was like one of the last songs, they did incorporate pure imagination into the scoring quite effectively. They used it for the reveal that Charlie's won the factory for the elevator sequence. Yeah. Just sign here, Charlie, and the factory is yours. Charlie Bucket, you are held responsible for the deaths and maimings of Mike TV, Veruca Salt, Augustus Gloop, and a Violet Bullegard. We sentence you to death. Do you have anything to say in, on your behalf? I'll see Willy Wonka in hell. <laughs> What happened was that when they tried, the problem was that the American press was not as kind to the show as in in London. It got mixed reviews. But right, I was about to say some people really be, liked it. Some people didn't. Can you be less kind than the British press? Yeah, no, but it was mixed. But the notices ran the gamut in the UK. But the American critics who checked out the show, including the all-important New York Times, because yeah. they often do review UK, big UK productions, weren't impressed. Well, at some point, WB pan uh, WB's theatrical arm panicked, and when the show was brought to the United States in 2017, they had eliminated many of the songs that Shaman and Whitman wrote, whatever could be replaced with songs from the 1971 film were brought in instead. Okay, that's a load of bollocks. And, so it, I... and the problem was, it completely threw the tone of the show off because the 20, because in the West End, this was one of the darker adaptations. Oh, now you just sold me on it. Damn it. I told you, I mentioned it to you before, but, the, but it was... It was completely willing to suggest some of the kids were going to straight up die. <laughs> okay, and here's the thing about Willie and Wonka. The whole tone Willie is... Willie and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We kind of did want those kids to die. No. Uh, the Aww. actor who played uh, Grandpa Joe in that production said, in the preview period, they were ready to tone some of it down, but the kids liked the the yes. armor implications, so they kept all that in. And it, it isn't and my they, it about because the stone, because the tone from the beginning is set up and proven that, you know, if if you, it's made perfectly made clear this is a dark fairy, co black comedy fairy tale. No, it's a, and it's the goes brother, accordingly. It's a modern version of the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, 
And it totally leaned into that, and that was one of its great strengths and what made it distinctive from other adaptations, along the fact that more than most versions, it was able to find a way to focus it on Charlie, even though he is kind of a bland protagonist. But when they got to yeah, New York... Yeah, perfection sucks, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> but when it got to New York... Which makes Barbie even better, because we fully acknowledge early on, just as they're partying... Yeah. Have you guys ever thought about your own death? <laughs> oh, I'm just mean. I hope I. D- <laughs> I'm just dying. <laughs> <He's dancing. laughs> but uh, when they brought it to Broadway, they substituted as many songs as they could. They couldn't do it with all of them because they wrote some really funny numbers for uh, establishing never, characters never, like the Braddy Kids. Never mind, like it was originally that. Paramount's money that was behind Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's Factor. true. Warner Brothers acquired the film when Paramount... Yep. No, this is going to the public domain. We could have had Mystery Science, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Screw you, Warner Brothers. That would have been a ball. But what had happened... At least the first half. Like, Oh, I would love to see Mike, Mike, Bill, and Kevin just butcher... Um, the song about Charlie and 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 uh, the golden ticket song. God damn, Grandpa Joe is an asshole. Now, when it got to Broadway, they replaced a lot of the songs and they also tried to center the story more on Willy Wonka again. That's a mistake. It yeah. is Charlie's story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people didn't understand damn that though especially those not familiar with the book as to why we don't really get to see Willy Wonka until the end of the first act when everybody heads into the factory okay that's the act one finale Hold on. I had like by the first time I saw Charlie and the Choc- Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory we're saying 1984 I would have been four years old yeah and then I was successfully able to ace those reading tests they had at um but if you you know you're gonna do okay in school when you have a high end autistic sibling ahead of you. She told me so much and yes, I exploited that. So, um, yeah. I, but I'm just saying it's like, okay, you watch Willy Wonka and we didn't have anything for what 35 years between Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? That might be an overstatement. I probably there saw have been other a- There were other adaptations. But I'm just saying, we had plenty of... With Raul Dahl stuff, you kn- you hear so often that, oh, it's not loyal to the book. And that inspires us to read the book. So I'm saying we should have all known what this was going to be by that point. But... But no, I don't think Wonka, getting back to the trailers, looks particularly promising. I don't know, that Timothy Chalamet, man. The, and it, if anything, it looked worse looking at the trailer in, in on the big screen, because the showing that the, it's another movie that's going really all in on those digital effects, and it looks wrong. Huh? Especially even this is a musical, and... Uh, but you showed me Olivia Coleman. I've been in love with her since Hot Fuzz. Oh, you should have asked. You should have asked me for a tour. I've been around the block a few times. <laughs> yeah, I saw Empire of Light. I'm not. <laughs> Empire of Light. That was a film she did last year for Sam Mendes. It oh. is on Max. Oh, no, I yeah. Uh. I've seen her. I've seen her in a lot of great stuff. I've seen The Favorite. I've seen The Lobster. I've watched... I really want to... I tried watching Fleabag with Allison, but she was not really quite comfortable when you introduce um, in the first scene. Yeah, sometimes you just let your ex-boyfriend bang you in the bum. Nor did she like the idea of... of Licking your bean to Barack Obama speeches, which I think that's just racist. Sorry to call you a racist, Allison. <laughs> so I know. 
Now with the other trailers they had, because again, a lot, of, we worked through pretty much all the animated features coming out for the rest of the year. Yes, no, Migration actually looks fun. No, Migration, I don't think it's the kind of movie I go see on my own. Right. But, but if mom wants to go see a movie, you're not going to yeah. object to it. Yeah, if people talk about what could be the breakout over the holiday season, Illumination has quietly killed at the box office during Christmas. Yeah, no, that's no denying that. I mean, I was even tempted by the, like, just because they got the bun- they got bunches of funches, mm-hmm. I do need to catch up with the Trolls series. I don't think I need to catch up with the Trolls movies. I mean, and it. You're talking it's, to a guy who's like, I yeah. need to get a King Shark tattoo at some look, point. Look, <laughs> What's that line in the Mystery Science Theater episode where they do the design for Dreaming Short and New Vina, the woman of the future, comes and tries to convince the, and tries to woo Mike. And there's that one point. She sings a lot, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's something very charming about Anna Kendrick, and it's kind of nice that we're actually finding stuff for a guy from NSYNC to do. I don't know. I've never been really that interested in the Trolls movies. Uh, uh, and, I, and yeah, but this being Dolby Vision and the fact that there are relatively few big ticket titles coming out for the rest of the year, we had to get the Paw Patrol movie. I don't really think that getting Dolby Vision engaged, Dolby Cinema engagements, but... Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> like, I mean... But that was as I of, said, that we're... That was a small success story during the pandemic was... That was one of the earlier movies that actually got into theaters. I, I think every parent had to take... it did surprisingly is, well, given yeah. that no one likes it. <laughs> well, I mean, every, every parent, every voice actor who had children had to go and do it. So, I mean, Paw Patrols, you want fascism. That's not Barbie. <laughs> that's just something I did love, was the entire calling <laughs> calling Barbie a fascist. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, you have stuff like Migration. I mean, Blue, Blue Beetle, they really should look like it's just sad that there's not gonna the strike happen because you could this is this is this is what the Encanto crowd would want. Well, I can't keep, just assume this is what X crowd wants. Uh, that way leads to madness. Well, I listen to um, I've had guests on the show from um, um, not a strong start. I've had um, George. He's um, George and most of the um, people, fellow podcasters, on a strong start, except for the Canadian they occasionally pull in. It's good to have a Canadian buddy. How you doing, Rambling Ronnie? Um, but um, yeah, I'm I'm thinking back on the trailers we got for Dolby Cinema. But I'm just saying they are very much like you're dropping the ball, Warner Brothers. We want our Hispanic hero. Well, it's just weird that. Of all the WB, besides those, they had the Wonka and Blue Beetle trailers attached, naturally, because this was is a Warner Brothers release. But otherwise, the Dolby Cinema trailers were all for either animated features or the Hunger Games prequel. Let's just say, as long as we don't get sewer mutants, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll give that a go. Uh, it's just... Uh, going to be a very strange holiday season if the strikes don't get resolved. <sighs> we still do not have the Aquaman 2 trailer. Were you in a teaser? I don't think that's coming out this year. It, well... They, they aren't... I think that really... I think they're ashamed of it. No, I don't think point. they're ashamed. Apparently it is... The reports have been that it is completely bombed in the test screening phase. They've gone in for two rounds of reshoots at least. I, I, I don't think you can really judge the test. The test. Because I'm going to tell you half of them are like, well, screw Amber Heard. Because I know they haven't totally cut her out of the movie. So, 
yeah, no, I don't think it's going to get fair test test screenings. I think what they're doing, I think, by not exposing it, this is just um, the gun camp really just buying as much time as they can before they actually have to release a good DC movie. So, um, which is really weird because, like, I've been dying. So, I was uh, waiting for AEW Rampage tonight, 9 o'clock, mm-hmm. TNT, Central Standard Time, Central Daylight Time, Central Time. Um, but beforehand, and again, I was telling you that uh, Friday nights on TNT are about the vibes. And I guess it's got Will Smith. Um, but um, I was like dying like to send my gif of Harley Quinn and uh, Deadshot from Batman Assault on Arkham. Neil McDonough is my Deadshot. If Will Smith wasn't quite a twat, maybe different. Um, I'm, so as I say I'm just saying it's it just I bring that up just because it's kind of like again so Suicide Squad is going to fit in so Rick Flat. I mean it's going to be a, quite the rebuild I wish they just give up on the whole biz, bloody business as somebody who keeps trying to come up with new content frequently while not trying to alienate my audience my dozens of people. No, I totally get the DC element of it. You just don't have any creative responsibilities, Rory. Where's that novel, Rory? How are you gonna, you know, you, you, you have the power to change YA. No, I don't. I don't know, you, you, I don't know how any person who, any woman who lived a typical, a standard, um, stereotypical teenage life could come up with Twilight or The Hunger Games. I don't know. That, that's that's all I'm saying. Know. I think I need to get to bed. We uh, yeah, no, we no, no, no. Tomorrow. I, I haven't even checked the bloody schedule when I actually have to get up. Oh, I have to get up at 10. Four times, ideally. That's when they open at ten. You know you. Well, no, I. Come on. Well, look, it was eleven. I didn't. I knew I had till eleven to see the Terra Strong. I see. That's like, oh yeah, I can, I can, I can do that. So yeah, no, I did not intend. I I was expecting to get a good fifteen minutes about Barbie. Let's go party. Uh 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 uh. Um. Not uh, 40 minutes of, well, I guess I've just figured out how not to do, actually need to produce a podcast this next week. Which is weird, because I got a lot of people wanting to jump on Dunkirk. Hmm. You, you, you know, once the credits roll, it's before one forty, and you know there's not going to be, be, let's set up the sequel to Dunkirk movie post credit sequence. Yeah. But I will say about Dunkirk, that... That is what uh, I think um, Christopher Nolan says. No, I need my movies on the big screen. Yeah, because that movie had no plot. <laughs> so. Got a lot of people lining up on that. Thank you, Mastodon. So, this has been 90 for Chill, the podcast. Signing off. Thank you very much to the Poetic Critic for inspiring me to check out a Barbie. And... Uh, as always, uh, rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast apps. Five-star reviews, please. You can be honest with your words as much as you want. I will read them. I will feel shame. But you earn that. I earn that shame. So, And uh, thank you very much, Stacia Harden, for looking after my uh, butt. And I hope you're squeezing the ever-living undead poop out of Skimble Shanks, the one-eared angel. So... Thanks for coming to the Night for Chill the Podcast and have yourselves a pleasant evening or morning. I don't know, podcast. Mm-hmm.